Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and this video is actually part of Audrey Gordon's 25 days of Copilot series and I am going to cover a section on building modern Canvas apps using Copilot and Power Apps. Now, before I jump into that, I want to spend a few seconds talking about Audrey Gordon. Uh, besides the fact that she is an amazing person, her and I actually have a lot of similarities. Uh, first of all, she actually nominated me to be a Microsoft MVP. So everything that I've been able to do so far, the beginnings came from her. So thank you so much for that, Audrey. But importantly, her and I come both from the InfoPath designer background. We both have extensive knowledge on the InfoPath designer side. Um, and so when we transitioned over to Power Apps together, I immediately saw the benefits of transitioning over from InfoPath designer over to Power Apps Canvas app. So a big thank you for Audrey Gordon for letting me be part of this 25 days of Copilot series. And now let's jump into building a modern Canvas app using Copilot in Power Apps. So one of my immediate business needs is actually tied to a hobby that some of you know that I do. I do musical holiday lights of a hobby. And most important thing on that is inventory check. Uh, I have to know how many props I have, even those smart pixel lights, how many pixels are there in each of the props. I need to keep track of all of those. Uh, and I've been doing the whole thing in Excel spreadsheet. Yes, I confess to and I use Excel spreadsheet, but I want to transition that over into Power Apps and I'm going to leverage Copilot for that. So I'm over here and I'm immediately in this intersection, I'm gonna go and say an app to catalog all the props of my musical holiday lights. Again, in simple English, I'm just going and putting that down. Uh, so now I go and click on go and the co-pilot is actually going and creating a rough copy of all the tables that I might need. So I'm, it's also taking information from what I actually placed in the original description because I said prop. And over here, it's actually saying, okay, prop ID, prop name, description, all good things it's putting up over here. And if I slow a little bit to the right, it's great. It's going color, sound, and everything. Uh, but what I do need is also additional things, such as add a number for quantity. So I'm gonna go and put this addition over here, and I'm gonna click on enter, or I can click on that. It says it's working on it. So now it's actually going and creating that quantity section as well. And specifically, if I scroll again to the right, you will see that this is a number quantity. And you can see right over there that this is actually a number. But for the props that I put up, I've actually been breaking it down into different things. One is the ones that are mounted on my house, the other ones that are actually mounted on my yard. So I've got these different things. So what I basically need is a choice type column. So again, in the description, I'm gonna go and put in this text. It says, add a choice type column with a name location with options such as house, yard, and driveway. Again, simple English that I'm putting in. All right, so now I'm gonna click on go and it's going in and actually creating this new column for me. It says working on it. And the moment it finishes, you see that I can scroll to the right. And not only does it add this choice type column, but it's also putting in some great examples based on the choices that I put in. But I still need at least few more. I'm almost thinking about two more. It says add a text column called vendor because each of these props, I go and buy them from very specific vendors. So I need to keep track of that in my data. Uh, so I went ahead and added this other column. Yes, it is a text type of column, which is perfect. Vendor one, vendor two, I'll go ahead and change that later. And then finally, I want to go ahead and add a date type column because I need to know what the purchase dates are. Uh, because after a while, I also have to make sure that, okay, this prop, I've had it for so many years. It is time to refresh it, which means I need to go and know what was the original purchase date. Again, as I scroll to the right, I am able to now see the purchase date. So thanks to the Copilot Studio step number one, I was able to build a really good table which directly goes into Dataverse so I don't even have to think about, oh man, what is the backend data source do I need? I don't have to figure any of that out. Directly the table will be built in a location which in this case is Dataverse. So now I'm just gonna go and click on create an app. And it says, thanks Daniel, we are creating an app for you. Again, this is all with Copilot in Canvas apps directly going in and building it for me. And there you go, we are now directly inside the studio. And the studio is loading. I can see on the right, the Copilot also preview has come up. And so far, everything is looking pretty good. And if I go and click on skip, I can already see that there is a main screen. And in the main screen, there is a screen container. All of this is pretty neat. Couple of things that I like over here, which really catches my attention is that how all of these things work together. So for example, if I just go and click on the preview, you can see that this is already working for different design options. It goes works on the iPad, which is pretty neat. It will also go ahead and work in for the iPhones. You see all of these things work really well. And if I want, I can go and you know, switch it or change the orientation. So based on how the orientation is, all of this works. I really, really like this out of the box responsiveness design that is there. Something which is very hard to replicate if you go and build this directly from the scratch. So let's go back into the studio and see what else we can tweak. So when I go back to the studio, 
I can see that on the, on the left side there is main screen, but if I go and expand on it, it's already using containers. And I like the fact that it is using containers because that is what gives it its responsiveness. All right, so let's keep moving forward. In this container section on the left, there is the uh, sidebar container. That's the one on the left. But what caught my attention over here is the fact that we've got this records gallery, but this records gallery already has a built-in search functionality. And you can see this is because you've got this formula in the items which is using search. What is the search that we have to use? The search is actually using the dataverse table, and then the search entry is coming from this text table. It says, it says search input one text. Well, that's what it is, search input one text. That's the one. And then based on whatever is that search input one, it's saying search for all of these different columns. So search based on the color, description, if there was anything to do with the prop ID. It's giving you all of this functionality. Now, and finally, I can go and enhance some of the look and the feel. Now, right now, at least in my tenant, if I go up to the settings and upcoming feature, in the preview, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, there is something called as modern controls and themes. It is off for me. If I go and toggle that on, I can go and now see two other things have happened. First of all, there is the theme functionality that has shown up over here. And then when I go to the insert, you also see the modern. So you've got all of these nice modern controls. A lot of them have actually already gone in GA. I've put that link down in the description below if you're interested. But in the theming section, in the theming now, and you've got now all of these different theming functionalities available over here. The default directly being power app, but you can go and use steel all the way down to platinum, green, red, and orange. So many more flexibilities available out of the box to maintain that modern look and feel. Now, I'm pretty happy with what the app looks over here, so I'm gonna make sure that I save it. And once I save it, I'll go ahead and click on publish because the final thing that I wanna do is also go ahead and update the data which I have over here. And the neat thing is I can directly go to the Dataverse and update it directly over there. So let's go and take a look. So this is the new modern app that we just created. If I go into the tables, on the tables, if I just click on all and I do a search, the search is basically the same thing we call the app, musical holiday. And moment I just type that in inside, this is the Dataverse table that was automatically created by Copilot. So if I click on it, it directly takes me into this section where I already see the nice data. But right over here on the top, you see this edit. I've got the option to edit data in Excel. So when I click on the edit data in Excel, it automatically goes and downloads this Excel file. If I go and click on it, it's actually going to go ahead and open up this Excel spreadsheet. It says, hey, keep me careful that it's got this enable editing functionality. It has a connection, an add-in type of a connection directly from the Excel spreadsheet on my local machine directly tied to that Dataverse. So I'm gonna just click on sign in, the pop-up comes up, the authentication piece is completed. So right now, I've still got this Microsoft Power Apps Office add-in, but right over here, I am now able to at least update all of these things that I want. I need to at least update what was the location, the prop names, all of this can be updated in, in bulk, which means I can go ahead and save it and do a publish, directly updates my Dataverse, which means I have the new modern app created, I've got my new data over there, and I am good to go. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.